Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comic and host of Bachelorette Recap, a guy's review. In today's video, we're going to discuss Rachel Kirk Connell, the paparazzi video and photos taken of her yesterday in New York City. And I want to talk about the morality of paparazzi. Uh, the paparazzi during the age of Instagram and how their job has changed and also the legality of paparazzi uh, with regards to the Constitution. I will talk about some, uh, actually one specific uh, YouTube criticism I was getting for promoting this paparazzi video and, uh, and, and we'll, we'll, we'll debate it. We'll, we'll have this talk right now. So if you guys haven't um, already watched it, I'm going to play the video and then I'm going to discuss um, critique from a commenter on my YouTube channel about uh, what it, why it, why it is I played the video and, um, and and all that, and then I will share my side of it all and what I do with my channel, and then and then we will discuss uh, some other articles about uh, how Instagram has changed the paparazzi world. Let's play this quick video here, Rachel Kirkconnell. Good, Rachel. New York City. How you doing? All right. Good, Good. Rachel. How are you? I'd rather not. <laughs> how you been, all right? I just want to say how you're doing with everything going on. Are you doing well? Things are good? Anything? How is life in post everything? I mean, are you doing with it all right? Nothing? All right, well, you got cool sneakers. <laughs> I wish you the best. It seems like you're in a good place. I guess the question is, there's photos of you kind of with Matt, any chance you guys are just friends, or what are you guys doing? Just figuring it out? All right, well, I wish you the best. Thank you. All right, have a good one. <laughs> If anything, we can all respect how beleaguered the paparazzo felt. He was like, all right, you got me. All right, I tried. I wanted to buy my kids some uh, birthday presents. It's a smarmy job. It's a slimy job. Of course. We made a video yesterday. Uh, we went live on the live stream and talked about it for about 85 minutes. And I showed it with my fiance. And, you know, uh, my fiance and I have both worked in the film industry for 10, 15 years. Both met in New York City working on a show called Mildred Pierce on HBO. And we've worked on plenty of shows. Uh, there are paparazzi in New York City that are known by names. The most popular is this guy named Steve. He, uh, he, he will go uh, to, he, he will push the bounds of his legal rights to get photos and all that as a paparazzi. It doesn't make it necessarily morally right. Uh, let's read the comments that were given. Uh, um, someone said, um, men sh uh, Hans55 said, men should speak out against other men stalking and harassing a woman. Would it be okay with you if it was a woman stalking and harassing another woman? I don't think stalking is good in any right. I don't think stalking is good. Stalking is actually illegal. Uh, and I've made um, dozens, I believe at this point, dozens of videos about the stalking that Colton Underwood did to his ex-girlfriend, uh, Cassie Randolph, by placing a tracking device under the trunk of her car, which uh, she, uh, her brother found. And uh, he was, um, uh, charges were filed and then dropped. And that was that story. Uh, stalking is not right, and it should be. Um, we should uh, put our uh, we should put our foot down and protect the women in our lives and the men in our lives that are receiving stalking. I actually have an ongoing stalker. Um, it is uh, it is through social media and through texting. Uh, this person has been, uh, you know, uh, it's it's a long story. I understand. I don't fear for my life with the stalker, but uh, with the one that I have. But anyway, to answer your point, um, I uh, or to to answer your statement here, I think uh, I think men should speak out against stalking. Uh, I don't consider paparazzi, in this case, stalking. That's my opinion of the matter. If you do think it's stalking, I would call um, I would call the authorities in New York, and um, I believe that it's easy to find the paparazzo. Um, and, and again, you should probably boycott uh, page six. And, uh, and if you believe that I'm promoting stalking, you should for sure not follow my channel. But I, I would disagree with your first assumption there. Now let's read your next one. You said, you lie. Yesterday, you said it was no problem about her being followed. Get a grip. It's not that it's not a problem. It's that it's legal. So if I have a problem with it, yeah, it's you watch it and you go, Ugh, like she's trying to repair things with her boyfriend. I've talked nonstop on my channel and leave a comment, guys. Let me know what you think. I'm open. I'm open to hearing uh, your comments as I'm reading one right now. Uh, often I'm accused of like not responding to certain people and not hearing certain types of people out. It's, you know, I'm busy. I'm not going to see every comment. I get thousands, but I, I will try to respond to them. I got to keep making content. Um, I said, uh, uh, so Hans says, you lie. Yesterday you said it was no problem about her being followed. Get a grip. Kelly said he said it was no problem in the video too. He didn't lie. 
Um, it's not that it's not a problem. It's that legally, it's it's within his bounds to do that. If you were to set some weird precedent and, and go against the Constitution that said you're allowed, you're not allowed to film people, then everyone with an iPhone will be sort of looked at as, hey, were you filming me? Were you filming me? And the answer is, like, you're allowed to in public. You can't film into someone someone's property. There's obviously standards that are set. I will share some laws that have been passed in California about uh, about not filming people's celebrities' children, which is a, which I believe in. You know, obviously, as an adult, when you choose the life of of being a celebrity and in the public eye, that is different than if you um, than than your children. Um, Hans says, good point. Dave has jumped the shark. He's Perez Hilton of early days. Sleazy. Uh, Just in the last 24 hours, I've been accused of being uh, two things, Perez Hilton and conservative. I don't know if they go hand in hand or if they're different. I do want to start keeping a chart of all the things that I've been accused of. Um, I said this is a clip from the same video of yesterday uh, because he said, uh, or he or she says, uh, I know it's the same clip. Paparazzi stalking should be condemned and illegal. Surprised you're on the wrong side of this. And then someone said, WTF, he's only saying it's not a crime. That's not an opinion, it's a fact, which is, you know, we do need to separate. You know, sometimes I'll just say things that, you know, aren't necessarily an opinion, and then people think I'm condoning, uh, you know, I'm endorsing something or whatever. Um, I'm endorsing the rights of people to go like, look, what are we talking about here? If you want to change the laws, sign a petition, get some grassroots movements going, but that's that's just, I don't know what you want me to do about something here that is legal other than... And look, I do understand your point. Just because it's legal doesn't mean I should be promoting it. Well, this is where it's like, look, if you watched a news clip of um, of the riots, does that mean you condone rioting because you're promoting the news, which is profiting off of the riots? You know, do you do you con- do you um, do you think it's okay to see, to see beheadings because there's a news clip of a? You know what I mean? It becomes a slippery slope here if you're going to be upset with the person reacting to the paparazzi. I would suggest at the very least writing a letter to the post saying, please stop doing this. If you keep promoting uh, videos of this uh, what woman, whatever, uh, then I will stop following your content. You know, a, a, a polite uh, a little boycott there. Um, Han says, you didn't say it was slimy until you started getting pushback. Watch your videos. Go ahead and watch the videos. You know, it's, it's you know, go ahead and watch the videos. Um And I said, new video coming out talking about morality. So that's where we are. So anyway, I do appreciate your opinion. There was another one that was interesting of someone defending the paparazzo. Um, Let's see if we can find this. I've never been a fan of paparazzi. I understand people need to make money and survive. However, harassing, stalking someone is just gross, especially if the person is clearly not interested in talking to them. I agree. I agree. Uh, But again, (laughs) what, what, what he did was legal. I watched it with you guys going, man, if I was Rachel Kirk Connell's friend, I would have my hand up going like, look, she doesn't want to talk to you. That's it. And the paparazzi can follow us all the way down the street. I think the paparazzo did, uh, you know, uh, what he thought he could to try to get a soundbite out of her. Um, and uh, let's see, I think that was one more uh, uh, a comment I wanted to read here. I might not be finding it. Uh, fa, da, 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 da. Yeah, it looks like it's gone. It's gone, folks. Well, you can go see the comments there if you want. So let's go in, into this now. Now, so look, it looks like we're going to have an impasse here and agree uh, to disagree where you think it's bad that I posted the paparazzi video. I don't want to get in the business of like sensationalizing things. And of course, I mean, speaking of sensationalizing things, I've got some weird content out there. Let me see if I can find some of this here. Maybe uh, I just moved this around. Um, I can't find it right there, but I've got some weird content uh, from Bachelor Nation, where I've got you know uh, photos of Dale's toes, and uh, you know I got I have fun. I, I have some irreverent fun, but I never want to do it in a way that's harming somebody. I don't. I know. I know that uh, this toes the line of that, but I cover Bachelor Nation entertainment, and there's a ton out there. Um, you know, I it looks like. Let's see if we can find it. There's so here's one of the paparazzi photos. Uh, you know, taken with a long lens. You can tell by the uh, the fo- like the uh, you can tell by the how the background's out of focus that it's taken from far away, probably at least 100 to 200 millimeters away, which would be a uh, you know 100 to 200 millimeter lens, which would be from across the intersection, a little bit less intrusive than a than a video in someone's face. Um, so anyway, let's let's just read this quick article. Do the paparazzi have too much freedom? Celebrity photographers go to great lengths to get shots of the biggest stars. Some think they go too far. I'll read a pro and a con. Pro for paparazzi, con for pop or uh, just 
Yes, I used to look, I used to like looking at photos of famous people, but then I became a celebrity bodyguard and I got to see how the paparazzi really work. Rules rarely matter. It's all about money. They dream of getting the next big shot and some will do anything to get it. So, um, so someone who has worked as a bodyguard has seen the negative side and I've seen it too. I've seen paparazzi fist fighting each other, um, to get a shot while I've, you know, cause I've worked on movie sets where you've got A-listers on the set, Jennifer Aniston, you know, big names and the paparazzi will just punch each other. You know, they'll literally get into fist fights trying to get the shot. Uh, you know, it's, it, it, there is a gray area between the usefulness of paparazzi and all, but also this article is old. I don't know if there's a date on this article, but this article is old. Obviously, it's from a news clipping here. Come on, what was this, 2012? Uh, in today's world, uh, paparazzi aren't hustling in the way they used to in the Britney Spears era. Uh, so to answer Hans, uh, the way that paparazzi treated Britney Sp Spears was despicable. The way that uh, DJs treated her. Um, uh, I mean, but was it was it Barbara Walters? Who was it? The the 60 minute interview. There was there was prestige reporters that were slut shaming Britney Spears. So it wasn't just the paparazzi. We let so many people down in the nineties. I mean, you have Monica Lewinsky. We have everyone slut shamed her, uh, for, for, for that, you know, real, real horrible stuff here. What we're seeing is a little bit, I think of an evolution because of social media where celebrities are, are being more voyeuristic themselves. They're taking back the control. They're monetizing the control. And because of that, they are not, the paparazzi is in less demand. So the first amendment protects freedom of the press. Of course, the Founding Fathers couldn't have imagined the paparazzi photojournalists who make a living pursuing and taking candid pictures of celebrities. But that doesn't mean First Amendment protections don't apply to paparazzi. The paparazzi, named for an Italian word that originally meant the buzzing of a mosquito, are the target of a 2010 California law designed to, strict, to restrict their activity. That law and others being considered by Hawaii are mistakes. Press freedom for paparazzi is part of the price we pay for aggressive and independent news gathering in America. Paparazzi are journalists. They sell pictures and video of people in the public eye. And though it may be inconvenient to be followed by photographers, celebrities benefit enormously from the publicity. The paparazzi don't have the right to break the law. The Constitution protects everyone's right to take a picture or video of anything or anyone in public. But you can't break into someone's home to get your shot. You also can't videotape into someone's home. I know with drones, there's a gray area because it's new technology, but I'm pretty sure they're, you're not allowed to take a drone video into somebody's property. The biggest problem with laws meant to rein in paparazzi is that they impose restrictions that can also be used to silence non-celebrity reporters following hard news. Sometimes reporters, paparazzi included, act badly while doing their jobs. But as long as they're not acting illegally, their bad behavior is a trade-off for the benefits we receive from their services, holding politicians to account, uncovering corporate wrongdoing, even snapping glossy pictures of Miley Cyrus at a movie premiere. A free country isn't always a polite country, but that bargain is worthwhile. And that is Gabe Rotman, American Civil, Civil Liberties Union. So in this specific case with Rachel Kirk Connell, you know, you might not love the idea she's being followed. She's not a politician. She's not Anthony Weiner, or she's not one of these scenarios in which like it really matters. It's purely on a uh, voyeuristic gossipy level, but the, that, you know, the, the, the rights of paparazzi exist like the rights of you and I. All right. Uh, and I do hope, uh, Hans 55, I do hope you understand the time and energy I'm willing to go to, to have this discussion. I'm not flippantly denouncing your point of view. It is, it does walk the line. I don't follow Perez Hilton. I don't know if this is similar to what Perez Hilton does. Um, and this isn't every story we talk about, but sometimes, as I figured out, the Clarendale sightings build an audience. So when you have stories like Colton Underwood stalking his ex, you have uh, you have a little bit of um, some equity built up with your audience, so you can talk about those tough scenarios. So what I'm trying to say is there is a balance between juicy gossip and moving forward, uh, you know, you know, with with other uh, social and progressive issues. Um, and again, that could be a cop-out, but again, maybe not. You're, you are watching this video, aren't you? So anyway, post-paparazzi, the celebrity photo in the age of Instagram. This is very interesting by Melissa Bachelor Warnk, Warnke, Warnk. Uh, this is on medium.com. Lately, it seems like everywhere you turn, someone is mounting a vigorous, if rear guard, sounding defense of journalism and journalists. The airing of a dramatic ode to the ink-stained staff of the Washington Post 
voiced by Tom Hanks in the middle of the Super Bowl, brought this wholesome Trump-era phenomenon to the door of parody. There is, however, one subset of journalists few would include in the nation's ongoing uh, uh, pain, pain? I don't know that word, the paparazzi. All right, I'm discredited. I don't know words. Take, uh, thank my English teachers. With the flush, panty-flashing 90s and aughts in the rearview mirror, paparazzi increasingly find themselves the lonesome denizens of a shrinking, stigmatized space. Never much respected by traditional journalists, they now confront an existen existential crisis as serious as that faced by the dwindling corpse of city hall reporters in small and mid-sized cities. But unlike the complex and murky shifts that have led to the stuttering of so many newsrooms across the country, the, driven, the driving forces behind the paparazzi's crisis are easier to identify. Namely, the enemy is Instagram. With an assist by the California Appellate Court that in 2015 upheld the so-called anti-paparazzi law, which strengthens privacy rights. Social media and Instagram in particular has given celebrities an immediate managed channel to their fans that paparazzi can't provide. The rise of this new celebrity image regime has simultaneously increased transparency in celebrity journalism. There's no question about whether photos were staged when they come directly from the subject and drastically decreased it. There's less access to unmediated celebrity images than ever. The new celebrity image curated and self-controlled offers casual access to private spaces like kitchens and home gyms that paparazzi by their very nature cannot reach. Despite their limitations, these inside looks have diminished the public's appetite for surprise snaps of stars stepping out of cars. They are also much less expensive for media outlets, which can reference social media shots for free. At the height of the market, a single shot of Naomi Campbell or Britney Spears doing something ban banal could easily pull tens of thousands of dollars. If you want a shot, you can still go to Chateau Marmont or Craig's, one celebrity publicist told me. But they're not going to chase you all around town like they did 10, hell, even five years ago. The old chase has largely been eclipsed by the winking game, as when Kourtney Kardashian recently emerged from Nobu Malibu with a myst mystery man. If you want your man to remain a mystery, you don't take him to Nobu Malibu. If you're a celebrity and you really want to live your life without cameras in front of your face, you can do it now, even in Los Angeles, notes Josh Azrael, a Kennesaw State University professor who studies California paparazzi. By the way, I probably butchered 30 words so far, so just forgive my uh, you know public school education here. <clears throat> Celebrity social media accounts now function as image banks and press handlers, accounting uh, anything from announcing anything from a pregnancy to a brand partnership with subsequent media reporting consisting of narrating the announcement. When I watch Good Morning America with my wife and there's a segment about a celebrity losing a lot of weight or doing a big charity cause, that celebrity is not even interviewed. The hosts are getting all the information from their Instagram account. That's a brand new approach to celebrity journalism. You know, this is actually very interesting. So this video might run long, but this is very interesting as it applies to Bachelor Nation. We are living through them with their Instagram reports. We'll jump, let's jump over. I think I might've lost, um, uh, you know what? I'm gonna have to do a separate photo about the TikToks and the videos that Inst Bachelor Nation has been posting um, in New York City, including Rachel Kirk Connell. Rachel Kirk Connell did post that she's in New York City. That doesn't give someone like paparazzi the permission to go follow them around town. But the more that she'll post what she's doing with her life and sharing it on her platform, the less value the paparazzi's photos will be. It doesn't necessarily make it right, but it's like when um, there's been a few a few celebrities who have just leaked their own nude photos because they were being blackmailed by people. I think it was one of the Hadid sisters, or it could have been Bella Thorne. It might have been Bella Thorne. I'm not going to search it here. I'll get demonetized. But the point is, is that people are taking the power into their own hands to share their brand image through their Instagram, their social media. With someone like Rachel Kirk Connell, She's trying to use her platform for good. She's obviously been involved in a lot of, um, you know, uh, with her racially insensitive liking of things and, and, and post photos and this and that. <clears throat> she's trying to grow from that. And I think she's actually done a fantastic job the way she's um, operated herself with the select amount of interviews and social media posts and uh, Instagram TV videos she's made. I think she's done a very, very good job. I think she did a really good job with this paparazzi. Uh, uh, but, you know... Would it be a better world if this paparazzi didn't follow her? Yeah, it'd be great if you could just walk out of your boyfriend's apartment and go to the park. Absolutely. I think that would be fantastic. I would fully endorse that. I don't think my video makes a difference whether these paparazzi are showing up or not. Maybe collectively, maybe it's like a sand on the beach. Maybe it, maybe it does a little bit. Maybe, maybe I am part of the problem. Uh, Hans 55. So to answer your question, yeah, maybe, maybe there's like, maybe I'm not like a full on Nickelodeon bucket of slime, but maybe I'm like a squirt gun of slime. Yeah. Who knows? 
What this means for the human picture of those who made their living selling celebrity images is as bleak as you'd expect. They're refinancing their homes, getting second jobs, or leaving the business altogether. As to the structural picture, we can hardly lament that fewer paparazzi are driving celebs to crash their cars or hiding outside their homes, but this relationship is three-sided. Against the celebrity in the paparazzi lie the rest of us. But these changes mean for the public to... What these changes mean for the public depends on which public you're talking about. As a grown woman, I experienced a shot of a celebrity looking normal, sweaty, and makeup-free on her way out of a yoga class, pretty similarly to how I do a highly contoured Insta story her team has blown to death with editing. Neither changes my life. But when I was 9 or 12 or 17 images of celebrities helping me understand how glamour was constituted, how bodies should be. For teenagers, it might just feel like communion to see a celebrity mess unfold in real time. The space between when certain questions are asked and answered, what the F is going on here and will it ever ease can be the space of years. There's some relief in seeing that space truthfully chronicled instead of crafted, wrapped, and sold at its conclusion. To me, mid-aughts, glamour was Lindsay Lohan, a fellow freckled redhead in my mean girl's orbiting world. She was also quite publicly falling apart. Shots of her past outgaped mouth outgaped mouth in the passenger seat of a car put the lie to the composed picture. Were they exploitative? There was no crawling under fences involved, if that's what you're asking. The images were captured in public space, but they garnered widespread press coverage, including the New York Times and opened a window for mockery of her substance abuse. I imagine that coverage was horrible for her. For consumers, it continued to complicate what had initially appeared a straight narrative. A child actress finds ever greater success. Yeah, so, so there's, there, you know, I mean, there, there is very slimy natures when you talk about someone who's barely of legal age and she's got a drug addiction or we talk about uh, the slut shaming, we talk about, uh, you know, this, this, some of these issues. Absolutely. So I guess with every individual paparazzi issue, you have to look at it um, for, for each one, issue that it is. Following someone out of their boyfriend or ex-boyfriend's apartment, do, I just I still stick with that's not stalking. There was no doxing involved. It was polite and it was legal. So if there's no doxing, if there's something polite and legal and it's not ongoing, I don't have the definition at hand, but I believe stalking is more of a repetitive nature. I don't think stalking is like a once pass by. If this guy shows up in Georgia... I would start to go, okay, let's pump your brakes. You're not just, you're no longer a New York paparazzi trying to sell some photos to the New York Post. But again, it becomes a slippery slope because, you know, is it stalking if it's one time? You guys let me know, you know, leave a comment. The odd unsettling paparazzi image that tells a bigger story still sneaks through. So, so paparazzi aren't dead. They still exist. They still make a few bucks, but not nearly as much as they used to. As when Ben Affleck's back tattoo earned its own New Yorker piece, but it happens less and less. Celebrities now tend to stumble in private and rise in public. Rough edges sanded down. Celebrities self-narrated stories of triumph over body image issues, addiction, anxiety are often banal. Cryptic, even indistinguishable. Life and death struggles make for dull captions, told with all the urgency and investment of a dream scripted by a luxury brand sponsor. Um... You know, for, for the sake of this lady's article, I really should just let you guys read the rest. For many paparazzi, the changes wrought by Instagram have been career ending. For celebrities, they've been largely positive. For the rest of us, those at the stars are allegedly just like the shift provokes more open, generative, and interesting questions. Uh, so that's my thought on paparazzi with regards to Rachel. We heard several sides of the story uh, protecting paparazzi's rights, but at the same time, protecting the rights of... Um, of um, of the people that don't want to be followed. Part of being an A-list celebrity is having paparazzi photographs you wherever you go. Uh, and again, and Rachel Kirk Connell's not an A-list celebrity. This isn't going to follow her on for life. Uh, this is what Jennifer Gardner had to say. She testified in front of the California State Assembly Committee to help get the bill passed. You guys know Jennifer Gardner, right? The, uh, what is she, Allstate commercials? What is, no, what it progress? What is her? I don't even know. They spend billions on her. Is it Allstate? No, isn't she a bank? Uh, some nation, whatever, <laughs> doesn't matter. She's got all those bank commercials. She said, I chose a public life. My three children are private citizens. I love my kids. They're beautiful and sweet and innocent. And I don't want a gang of shouting, arguing, law-breaking photographers who camp out everywhere we are all day, every day, to continue traumatizing my kids. Fair. However, children aren't the only ones who have been successful in preventing paparazzi from harassing them. One Direction singer, Harry Styles, recently won a court order to restrict their behavior. The injunction specifically states that paparazzi is no longer able to pursue Styles in a car or motorcycle. They're also unable to put him under surveillance and wait within 50 meters of his home. Paparazzi have been around for quite some time, and it will be interesting to see what their role is in the future if laws continue to become more strict. You know, it's very interesting because the paparazzi in Rachel Kirk Connell's instance for sure was just waiting outside the apartment 
you know, of course, um, I won't get into these other articles. Of course, unfortunately, uh, Princess Di had her uh, famous car crash where she died because of uh, being chased by paparazzi. And um, there's obviously uh, other other issues, like we said, with the filming of children, the high-speed chases. If you Google, if you guys are interested to go on a ride and Google Justin Bieber paparazzi, you should have seen some of the car chases. They were hounding him. I mean, that's wrong. That's absolutely wrong. So I guess it's important for us to understand the difference between a paparazzi coming up to Dale and Claire on a beach versus or, or down a city block. And when they say no comment, no thank you, the conversation ending, you know, within 30 seconds, the conversation was over within 30 seconds versus the repeated attempt to get information from somebody. You know, what is the difference? Is there a difference? Uh, you guys can be the judge. Leave a comment. I do appreciate all of your comments, even if we disagree. I think we live in a world in 2021 where we can agree to disagree on certain things. If my channel has jumped the shark, uh, then I guess I'm your Fonzie, right? Isn't that from the same? Isn't jump the shark from when Fonzie literally jumped a wave runner over a shark? I don't know, folks. Leave a comment. Let me know. And uh, more content coming. I've got a lot happening here. Let's see. I got a couple notes. Um, we've got, uh, yeah, uh, the, we'll talk a little bit more about the uh, TikTok video of all the New Yorkers, all the Bachelor contestants in New York. I guess that's fair game to share. At least that's on social media. So we'll share some of that next video coming up. And um, also reports, if you're still watching, that um, that Matt James is dating somebody else. I'm going to take this one with a grain of salt because there's no source behind these rumors. But anyway, folks, check that out. If you need more content, my vlog channel is live with its second video. Link in the description. Bye, guys.